Tracy and Violet from Tea Time with Tracy and Violet. Violet is over there in the yard. She might make an appearance. She might not, but she's out here. It is 2.04 in the afternoon, and boy, do I need a cup of tea. I need a cup of tea. I've had a busy morning, but I'm going to talk about a book I read a while ago, and I really liked it, and we'll just chit-chat about it. But I'm going to have some tea first. I'm having some vanilla Earl Grey tea. Oh, I don't think she's been out before. It's a picture of um, a community swimming pool, actually. It says Swimming Pool Fundy National Park near Alma NB, New Brunswick, maybe? My, if I have any friends in New Brunswick, which I know I do, but I don't know if any of my friends on this channel are from New Brunswick or not. But anyways, is there an Alma? Or maybe this is a different place, but yeah yeah there's some gold down at the bottom gold up at the top and gold on her arm off to the side on her elbow and on the back of her arm look at that and she has a gold ring on the inside this is i don't know if it's picking up but it's like a it's like a yellow color and the picture is black but it's like a yellow color she also has some flowers there and then on the back of her. Violet, what are you doing? Some flowers there. Just hold on a second. Oh. Yeah, and then this is her skirt or pedestal. I hold it the right way, so. Uh, there. So yeah, and she has gold around the edges here. It's the same picture. Salisbury Fine Bone China, made in England. Wonderful. Let's have a spot of tea. Have a cuppa. You might see some leaves falling. It's that kind of a day. I'm using Mom's teapot again. Just I need to dig out my other ones. But and I filled her up. Filled her up. No, this morning I um. Took the Halloween books from the attic downstairs and switched out the books from the kids' bookcase and took those books up, the Halloween books down, because, you know, you got to have some Halloween books. Mmm. This is delicious. Anyways, I wanted to do this before the kids got home from school. Now, I didn't refresh on this. I read this, I don't know, within the month. Like, I read this in August. So, anyways, it's uh, The Missing by Sarah Lang. I didn't know anything about this book when I got it. All I remember seeing about it was something was unleashed in the forest and kind of took over things and I didn't know whether it was a monster I didn't know whether it was like a ghost or zombies or I had no idea so I kind of went into this book blind and I've never read anything by her before I guess there's a book that comes up before this but you do not have to read it in sequence at all because um, I didn't and but I actually the first book is The Keeper which I I actually have on the way coming I ordered it because I like this one so much. Um, the Keeper, I think, takes place in a neighboring town where this story takes place, if you know what I'm saying. And in this story, that town is pretty much abandoned. So whatever happened to that town, you know, I shouldn't say it's abandoned. It's not, but it's not what it used to be, if you know what I'm saying. So anyways, this story... It was such a delight to read, um, and I read it relatively fast. Like, it just took me a couple days to read it, because I really got into it, two or three days. Um, there's, well, just about 400 pages right on the nose. Yeah. <clears throat> this story has a lot of characters in it. Um, basically what happens, the story starts off with a young woman brought up in this town she left went away got her teaching degree and then ended up having to come home 
regretfully, like she didn't want to have to come home, but she came home due to circumstances and she got a job at a local school. Now this is just a rinky dink little town. It's not a big city or anything like that. And I thought this story was going to focus, oh, this is, I, I forget what her name is, but this is her story. And it is, but it's not just her story. There's a hornet sitting right there. Uh, it's her and a bunch of other people. So basically, she is a teacher at this little hubbub of a schoolhouse and elementary school. And there's this one particular student that's a handful, so to speak. But, you know, she she's very good at what she does. All the students like her. And she organizes this field trip. This field trip goes to this neighboring town that's kind of been ransacked and kind of abandoned due to industry and whatnot. This is what I'm talking about, the keeper. I think that's where that book must take place. I don't know. But anyways, the field trip was to go to this neighboring town just as a field trip to learn about the environment because there was some sort of environmental catastrophe that went on and then industry went belly up and all that sort of thing so the kids were very excited she was very excited I'm really keeping this condensed and the story does get into some of her close friends that are from this town too before all this takes place I mean they're not really they've friends she went to school with but they're her friends now because she lives in such a small community these are about the only people she could be friends with age wise and you know what I mean that sort of thing but anyways this field trip went to this neighboring town and it's really minimal amount of people there it's kind of ransacked it's disheveled it's graffitied it's abandoned the forest is dead uh and anyways, lo and behold, she returns back to the school with the kids. Only one student isn't there. The student, it's that handful student, and he ran off. He ran off and uncovers something. He's overwhelmed by something in the forest and digs like an animal like an animal just digs and digs and it's really quite graphic because I'm saying that he digs but it's not just digging in dirt and he turns into something else in the sense like his mind he's just crazy trying to get down to whatever it is he feels the need the possession to get down and uncover this thing and uh when this teacher gets back to the schoolhouse, she realizes, I forget, this little boy isn't here, so organizes like a search party, the school. She, of course, is going to get in trouble. The boy's father's demanding her to be fired and all that kind of stuff. They can never seem to find, never seem to find him. But since that day, things started going awry in the little town that she lives I should say it's it's bigger than a little tiny village but it's not like a city city I'm just going off all the memory after that happens the story starts introducing more characters because really that was a good not a big chunk but a chapter or two building up to that and then when things start going awry and by by the way, I say that the little boy that went missing is seen by his big brother at one point, but the little boy doesn't go near his big brother and runs away if the big brother comes. And he catches his little brother, the one that went missing, eating a raw rabbit or something like that. Like he killed a rabbit and just ate it just almost like a zombie kind of thing like yeah it's bizarre this story was such a surprise for me because I had no idea this is a grown-up this is a not a young adult kind of story because there's a lot of gruesome 
acts in this. Um, but I liked how it introduced, it wasn't so many characters that I couldn't follow along. Some of the other characters were, um, it was a doctor, like a psychi psychiatrist or psychologist, either or, and his family, like his wife and daughter. Another character is a single mother of two teenage children he, she used to be a trophy wife to some mega rich man, but she eventually got switched out for a younger woman, and now she's with these two kids that she loves, but they're spoiled rotten brats and ungrateful sons of guns. And then there's, there's just, there's a few different characters in the story, and you kind of follow all along. And what happens is people seem to start to get infected with something like a flu you know like a plague of some sort people are calling in sick and then everybody's calling in sick and then the people that were working at the hospital you know they're sick so everything pretty much goes to hell in a handbasket and I really liked the way it was explained in the story really You could really feel for the characters and some characters you like, some characters you didn't like. And then sometimes you felt bad for some of the characters you didn't like because of the scenario that's going on. And then the teacher's not completely out of the picture. However, since everything has gone to the wayside she's stuck at home with her mother and her and her mother do not have a very good relationship at all her mother wasn't a very nurturing mother she sits and I think drinks and smokes and just watches TV she's a couch potato to the max and this teacher appears to have gotten this same sickness that everybody else in the community has gotten and the sickness makes people crazy. Like they will try to eat people or eat and eat and eat. They get so hungry, so hungry, they shove whatever they can get their hands on in their mouth. And she's getting this way. She, her mother can't handle it. The doctors are overwhelmed. And this doctor that I said, him and his wife and his daughter, Eventually, you know, he tries to do house calls, but then he's stretched to the max. Anyways, I don't want to give too much away, but I really, really enjoyed this story. It really felt kind of like a movie, and you followed along these people who at the beginning seemed like perfectly normal, sometimes idiot people, but normal people. And how they eventually whittle down to, near the end of the book, how they are then. Some are still sane, but gone through the ringer. Some of them are infected so bad that you don't know what's going to happen to them. And then there's people doing horrible things to people before it gets to the extreme. To try to cover their own asses. Like. Yeah. I can't really tell you. Because that will give it a lot, a lot of it away. But. Humanity is the worst. Worst kind of scare. Scariness. I can think of. And if something like this were to happen. What would you do? What wouldn't you do? You know what I mean? And I have to say, the ending of this story, I really loved it. Really, really loved it. It gives you that sense. Now, some people might not like stories like this. I don't mind not having a happy ending. And I'm not saying that this wasn't happy, but it wasn't happy. But it wasn't like... Not everybody dies. You know what I mean? Well, a lot of people don't die, but... I can't really explain that either. Um, the way this ends, it haunts you. 
it, it haunted me. I was just like, I was sick afterwards in the sense like, oh my God, this is absolutely terrible. And not terrible so much that I don't like the book because I will absolutely read this one again. But it gave me such a sense of longing and terribleness like oh oh I hurt like what happens at the end of this I thought was top notch now that's not everybody's cup of tea I like when horror stories actually have appropriate horror endings you don't need a gussy up an ending for me you don't need to I don't know if these people are looking at me or what are they doing can't tell. A truck driving by slow. Stopping in front of my house. Violet, get ready, sister. She's not even, oh, now she, she's paying attention. I don't know. They might be trying to get cell reception because where I live, we don't get cell reception. You need to drive way up the hill to get cell reception. That's kind of, that's the rural I live in. Yeah, they keep on trucking. Keep on trucking there, Buster. Anyways, yes, I like. you don't need a gussy up an ending to make it like, oh, okay, everybody's going to be okay eventually. Eh. I like the kind where it's like, it doesn't leave it on a cliffhanger, but it doesn't give you the full resolution because you got the resolution you needed. But it's not the one that you wanted. Those are the kind of stories I like. And this was a perfect example of that for me. So I can't wait. I cannot wait for the Keeper to come. Because that's the first one of this series. I think there's only two of them. And then I ordered her one other book that I noticed. Audrey's Room or Audrey something. Audrey's Closet. I don't know, something like that. I plan on reading that. But I just wanted to talk to you today about that book before I got too far away from me because there's other books I need to talk to you about. September's coming to an end. I've been reading a lot of books. I just finished Hex. I'm doing a reading vlog with that. It's my second reading vlog and I plan on posting those the beginning of October so it gives me a chance to catch up with other things. And Anyways, yeah, I I really enjoyed enjoyed that. I keep saying it, I know. I recommend it. I don't really do star ratings, but this was just like a nice intertwined story. Wasn't too complicated, but it wasn't too, um, wasn't too tame. It certainly wasn't tame. There's... There is gruesomeness in this. There is killing. There is breakdowns. What else is there? Cannibalism. There is, yeah, drug use, swearing. I don't know. Whatever triggers sexual assault. Yeah. Mental health, for sure. But anyways, that's all I need to say about that. Sarah Lang, if you've read this book, let me know because I got it on a whim and I'm glad I did and I'm hoping the Keeper is going to be just as good and I'll let you know eventually when it gets here and when I read it, but for now I'm going to say peace, love, and happiness today and every single day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you so choose, but if not, that's okay too. I still love you. I still want all the happiness in the world for each and every one of you out there. I certainly do. I really, really honest and truly do. Yes, I do. So, all right, guys. I know that kind of makes it sound like a zombie movie. It's not quite a zombie or a book. It's not quite, but yeah, check it out. Please, if you do check it out, let me know that you check it out. So, all right, guys, with that, I want to say have a good night or have a good morning. And I might see you tomorrow. Bye. Bloop.